Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another camping and fishing adventure. In today's episode, we're going to take you to one of our favorite camping and fishing spots on the top of the South Island. Let's go. Okay, a bit more natural maybe. So guys, our adventure begins with a four hour ferry crossing across the Cook Strait from the North Island to the South Island. We use the blueberry, uh, the blue, what's the blue bird? No, yeah, the blue, the blue bridge. We use the blue bridge ferry to cross from the North Island to the South Island. I don't know why I always think of blueberry, eh? probably because there's so many blueberries where we are at the moment. Pretty rough ride, guys, uh, as it usually is. Big swell, big rough waves out there. I kind of like this rough condition. Haitian thought someone puked at the window because the window was so dirty, but maybe it was just a little bit water. But yeah, it was actually so rough that even the sea cells, uh, sea cells, one, two, three, it was so rough that even the seagulls looked a little bit sick. <laughs> Which one is the freaking button? Oh, yeah, okay. Now, after arriving on the South Island, it's only a short drive to our favorite camping and fishing spot there. So it's the Whites Bay Dock Campsite. Voila, secret is out. And it's only a short drive from Picton, like I said, towards Blenheim, turn to the coast. And then you gotta have a nice big challenge, especially if you're towing a caravan, to cross over an extremely steep hill to get to the uh, campsite. Lots of people actually don't tow their caravan over there because they're a bit scared of engine trouble, brake burnouts, especially if it's a heavy Australian made caravan. But you know, our good old Ford Ranger thought can handle it. So yeah, it was a nice little adventurous drive going up and down that hill. Very slow going, but we could manage to do it. So the Whites Bay Dock Campsite, it's our uh, third visit here already over the years tells you that we really love this campsite. So the campsite is beautifully nestled in that, in that Whites Bay Valley and there's lots of native bush around there. There are wekas running around on the campsite. Lots of nice grassy spots to camp at. And imagine that there are even uh, flush toilets and cold showers. What a luxury for a dog campsite, right? Like I said, over the weekend, it gets really busy there because lots of the day visitors, they also use the campground and park their cars there while they're using the beach. So you gotta get in early to get a nice spot. Even then, if you find yourselves a nice spot, you might have some people, they just decide to camp right in front of your nose. We had this problem. We found ourselves a nice spot. Five minutes later, someone came in and parked his caravan right in front of our entrance door. So you know, what can you do, right? Because of the busy season, we decided this time we're gonna explore the other base around uh, that area a little bit more. In this area, there are also uh, some other really nice campsites. So if you go a little bit further over to Robin Hood Bay, which is the next bay, there is free dog campsite and camping spots right next to the beach. What are you doing? I'm collecting few watercress reefs for dinner tonight. I make nice salad with it. So a little bit foraging, eh? Yes, a little bit foraging for watercress. So quite often you find watercress growing along little streams across the country. And if the water in those streams is nice and clear, then watercress is very healthy, guys. So and it goes really good with fish because it's also a bit spicy. So yeah, watercress peppery. and foraging, peppery. That's the word I was looking for but you have to put up with that really dusty road. And when you're towing a caravan, it's not, not that uh, nice to have all that dust in your caravan afterwards, you know? It's also a pretty rough road, but lots of people actually went there with tents and small cars setting up on the other side. So Robin Hood Bay is another really good alternative. This is what you get for driving the road to Robin Hood Bay. So much dust. 
And the other one is just before you go over to that big hill to Whites Bay, there's another campsite called um, Rarangi, another dog camping site, not a free one, but it's also quite nice. And if you camp there, then you don't have to go over that steep hill, especially if you're towing something, because I think that hill is actually not recommended for towing heavy caravans. We thought it's okay to go to Whites Bay with a caravan. And then from there, we just took our uh, truck to go to the next base, which I personally like a little bit better for fishing, especially Robin Hood Bay. And then even a little bit further down towards Sport Underwood, there's some nice little bays for launching small boats and stuff like that. So the Port Underwood area has quite a few mussel farms and we decided to go and have a look in that Port Underwood Bay. I think it's a bay, it's not a sound. And have a look if we can, yeah, what we can catch there. All right, everybody. So we are here near Port Underwood on the South Island. And the plan today is to pump up our Aquamarina air cat, our little inflatable fishing boat, and launch that at a nice little sheltered bay here. It's coming soon. The weather forecast uh, for today is, is looking pretty good, not too much wind. We're gonna motor out into that Port Underwood area, into that bay, and see if we can do a bit of fishing and also a little bit of diving. So that's the plan for today. We're currently on the way. We're just driving past Robin Hood Bay here. And we just wanna have a look if we can launch our boat here. It's not too swelly, otherwise we go one bay further. We can drive to the beach, drive right onto the beach with this boat train. Safe for three little four wheel drive. Oh, slow back, sand castle. There's not a lot of swell here. Here is a Lobinut Bay, guys. Nice long sandy beach. Normally very swelly though. So, guys, you can launch a boat here too, actually, like these guys over there. But if we drive one bay further, we are actually closer to Port Underwood and we don't, then we don't have to take the boat for too far through the shop. Warning sign, Cook Strait Cable Protection Zone. We just arrived in Ocean Bay and then we prepare our boat. We'll take some time and see you at the water. We did run into a little snack with our outboard motor. I didn't just want to start initially, and I think it was because it was lying in the back of the truck for quite a while. So the gas or oil must have run into the engine and I just couldn't pull the, the string anymore to start the engine. It was just completely stuck and blocked. So I think the cylinder was full with oil probably. But this bloody motor doesn't start. Suddenly, after a bit of old fashioned cursing, uh, I got the baby started again, so it was pretty good. It's a smoke, I think there was lots of oil in the engine. Lots of oil in the engine, that's why so much smoke came out, huh? Oh, it didn't from, start. Lying, from lying on the side. Oh, why? Oh, we get some some parts that it does, shouldn't be there. Yeah. And is it alright? That we, is it safe to do, use it or not? We zoom around the bay a little bit where we are so in paddling action, and then uh, we'll see. We managed to get to this uh, headland here, across the road from the ocean bay. And then Mark is now taking his Genjik, what is it? My Genjik today. Yeah, very good. And for me, I probably go with a soft bay because I don't want to lose my Genjik. What's Haitian doing there? I'm going to put this genie clip in the, my only knot, uni knot. Lots of mussel farms behind us. Good sign. It's time for fishing. I think that's the muscle barge. It's working now. We should go there if it's working there and fish there. <laughs> Is it a diver? Maybe they're, they're dropping oh, a diver. Oh, boys, maybe. 
Maybe it's a power diver or like a kinner diver or something. Or crayfish diver. I don't know what, what they're diving now, but someone is diving there. I want to dive there too soon. And then we are getting cold. Southerly, southeasterly, no? Jesus. So we're taking our windproof jacket. Banana in this river. The banana was squeezed on the, in the dry bag on the bottom of everything else. Okay. So I got something something is on. First fish, I right? A, I think it's a snapper. I All right. Weird. On a Genjik. Looks like it's a good one too. Really? Oh, looks like it might be a keeper. How good I is mean, that? It could be a could be like a big big ass gurner. It's got oh. definitely lots of head shakes there. But let's see what we got. Could be something else too. Since we're here on the South Island, you never really know what you get. Yeah. Oh, look, like a good yeah. shake. It's definitely not like a small, small fish. Great. Wow, snapper. snapper good yeah. size. All right, South Island snapper. They say South Island is not good for snapper fishing, but... But not here, on the top. Looks beautiful wow <laughs> good size uh, penny that one is very good fresh fish for dinner <laughs> right good kids mark <laughs> yeah check that out who would have wow. thought wow <laughs> beauty oh yeah Look on the boat yep make sure we don't get broke on the boat yeah well i actually I didn't actually expect the snapper here. Yeah? Oh, very good size, right? I think yeah. got a something big. I just dressed up in my swimming swimsuit here, in my wetsuit. <laughs> just dressed up in my wetsuit and Haitian is on. Haitian, what's that? Snapper? Something not snapper. Not snapper, but something big. Fights like here. Fights like here. Could be a car, right? Yeah. What about car, right? There was some bird works. Oh, this is quite heavy. Okay. I'm gonna fight yeah. and win. Lift it up and then reel down. Lift up, reel down. Yeah, right. snipple. Hey, snipple. Oh, yeah, another good penny. Yeah, same size as yours, I think. I think. It's such a mess on the boat. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well done. Yes. So we got yeah, two nice snapper, snapper, two snapper now, one each. It's very good fishing in my little South Island. Yeah, snapper fishing is very good. On. <laughs> <laughs> they love Genzig, right? Nice color. Beautiful. Haha, <laughs> this foggy. Yep. Keep it for tomorrow. Or keep it for neighbor. Neighbor can I was thinking more of uh, maybe catching some gurnard or some blue cut. We caught actually two really nice big snapper on, do we use Grim Reaper lures? No, we caught them on the gold old Genji guy. And I also went for a quick dive, got a few power. And yeah, that was a really good start to our camping and fishing adventure there. We were really lucky with the weather when we were there because this area is not called a cloudy bay for nothing, right? Usually the visibility around there is very, very uh, bad, but we had a pretty lucky spell with westerlies. So the water visibility was really nice and I couldn't wait to do a little bit more diving around there. So the next day I decided to take my boat over to Robin Hood Bay, launch from there, check out the surrounding areas, the reefs and the rocks around there, here for a chance of getting another crayfish for Christmas. Perhaps also maybe another power or two. So yeah, there are lots of places where you can go free diving uh, when you have a little boat. The whole coastline is rocky and reefy around there. There are like tons of options to go to. I found myself a nice little spot and started diving around there. Managed to capture also a little bit of uh, underwater footage. Obviously not as clear as going diving up on the north in the Northland, but it was still pretty good. And as you can see, yeah, there are lots of power around still. So really nice. Also some good sized ones. 
And yeah, I managed to find myself a whole bunch of crayfish. So I was hunting them for quite a little while, those crayfish. Uh, first I saw only small ones. Some of them, there was too deep in the cracks. Holy cow, look at what this looks like after driving one time to Robin Hood Bay. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. But it was well worth it. Check out today's catch. So stubborn. So I've been having trouble grabbing those crayfish uh, lately. The other day, I was having a go at at least ten crayfish, and I couldn't grab them. They were too deep in the cracks. Today, I decided to take this thing with me. I bought it a long time ago, and it's sort of a crayfish. I don't know what you call it. Crayfish rake or grabber. These crayfish, they don't seem to be scared of metal. Much better on the crayfish because if you jam your hand into the hole to grab those crayfish quite often you break off those horns here sometimes you just get a hold of one horn and the crayfish really wedge itself into the hole and you can't really pull it out anymore and sometimes it just breaks off and if it's a small crayfish uh, you know you hurt the crayfish it they grow back but it takes a long time so with this thing you just wedge it behind the crayfish and then you just grab the crayfish like that and they have nowhere to go and then you can pull pull them out like that check the size check if they're female or not and if you want to release them back if they're too small they're completely undamaged see there's no missing leg or anything really good way to do this with craze i think i'm going to use that from now on more often rather than trying to grab them only by hand with that little trick in stock now i managed to get two nice big crayfish yeah we had for our christmas dinner with friends and also a couple more uh, power from the rocks. So that was all in all pretty epic. Really enjoyed diving around there. And it's, it's such a nice uh, place to do that. Perfect right now. Mm. Perfect condition kinna. Super creamy. All right, so another spot I always wanted to try some fishing at is the Queen Charlotte Sound. And uh, I always wanted to launch my boat from Picton. Well, you can't really launch it from Picton, but the next bay afterwards is actually uh, much better for launching. It's called the Waikawa Bay. It's just a few kilometers past Picton. And there is a public boat launching area. All the fishing reports I have uh, so far read or all my research about the Queen Charlotte Sound did not look too promising here yeah, the fishing is supposedly not very good there anymore but you know i always wanted to give it a try anyway all right here's the boat ramp and you have to pay ten dollars for launching please pay donation what is it you have to pay ten dollars or is it a donation lots of dinghies here how did they launch them they all have to pay $360 per year if they want to launch their dinghies here. Dinghy. And no parking. And it's the 26th of December. It's Boxing, Boxing Day today. <laughs> so, Boxing Day. So instead of shopping, we're going to go out and fishing. we want to do a bit of fishing. So we've been to, through Picton many times before. Uh, whenever we go to the ferry to the North or South Island. We never managed to fish here actually, so today is the first time for us to try and boat and fish here. And we came to this boat ramp because that's pretty much the only boat ramp you can go to. We have to do a $10 donation to be able to launch at this boat ramp. We couldn't find any other water access here in Pickman. But it's a beautiful day today. It was a bit foggy on the way here mm -hmm. and now the sun is up supposed to be no wind until early afternoon so no wind is good yes <laughs> just looked at the fishing regulations and it seems you can catch two blue cod here a minimum size 33 centimeters and then of course gurnard and maybe a taraki so yeah we'll see if we can catch anything i'm gonna take our micro jigs and let's go Anyway, we headed into the sound after launching our boat. So we went out there 
or fishing around the headlands, trying to dodge jet skis, ferries and whatnot. And we didn't have a single bite on that whole day, so nothing at all. We were mainly fishing with micro jigs. We got ourselves some uh, nice glow bite lures that we were actually uh, planning to check out that day. It was still a pretty enjoyable experience though. Uh, navigating our way around this area, seeing those big ferries coming in compared to our little boat there. If you enjoyed following along, make sure you give our video a thumbs up. And if you really loved the video, then give it two thumbs up. Now, if you got three thumbs, you might want to get checked out. Finished or was it?